It's a game that will go down as one of the greatest ever played, an upset that lives on in NFL infamy. The New York Giants, considered underdogs, beat the 18-0 Patriots in Super Bowl 42 against all odds. Now legendary coach Tom Coughlin is looking back at the victory in his new book, A Giant Win, with a forward with a quarterback who was right by his side to win two Super Bowls, Eli Manning. The two sat down with our Trevor All to talk about their friendship, an ongoing friendly rivalry with Tom Brady, and Coughlin's time as a caretaker caretaker for his wife. Coach Tom Coughlin and Eli Manning, thanks so much for making time for us. I gotta admit, this is the only interview where I've been tempted to be five minutes late, <laughs> just to see what would happen. That so, would have been a bad decision by you, I think. Yeah, yeah, I, it would have been the wrong foot to start the interview off on. Your book is full of a ton of good stories. I know you said to Michael Strahan earlier that you believe that this was the best Super Bowl of all time. I do. Why I do you do. believe that? Because it's against an opponent that was the greatest scoring machine in the history of the National Football League, all the statistics, and no one pointed to the fact they were fourth in many categories on the defensive side of the ball. They had great personnel, they had played well together. We had played them in week 17. We go out, they beat us 38-35, but we led the game. At, at, we were in the fourth quarter with the lead, but when we walked off the field that night, we knew we could play with them. It's funny how you started that answer Verbatim was something that I wrote down from the book, which is, we knew they were the greatest scoring machine in NFL history, just like we knew Tom Brady was the best quarterback to ever play the game. Does that hurt your feelings? No. <laughs> no. The guy's got seven Super Bowls. He's got five or six MVPs. He's, he's 44, still playing at an elite level. Does not hurt my feelings. Uh, and, you know, I was just fortunate to be on two great teams, to be able to take him down, including that 2007 team. And, you know, I've gotten to know Tom over the years, and I never say anything to him, and I never talk about that game, but he brings it up. That game bothers him badly <laughs> because they would go down as the greatest team in the history of the NFL probably, and they can't say that because we beat them, and it, and it hurts them, and it bothers them, so I kind of like having that on him. <laughs> but, you know, 15 years down the line, what, what makes this Super Bowl and this story worth telling still? Well, to me, the greatest, certainly the greatest upset in the history of the Super Bowl, but it's also the timing. You know, we've been through COVID, we're in a recession, we're, we have all, all kinds of people, and anybody that's down on their luck or, you know, had a bad day or whatever can relate to this, because it's about hope and inspiration, because all you gotta do is take, first of all, they wanted to fire the coach. The coach was gone after the 06 season, okay, and had to battle to get, really quite frankly, to get his job back. The second half of the season wasn't easy. And yet we, you know, just hung in there and kind of hung in there and made things happen and got ourselves in position. Between hope, we, between inspiration, and between someone telling you you can't do something, that, that, the reality of that, you can't underestimate it. I mean, you talk about in, in your forward how the two of you were bonded, not just from your successes, but also you know what it's like to have New York want to run you out of town at the same time, too. Sure. Right? I would imagine it makes the success all the more sweeter, right? No doubt. And, and that, that year, uh, 2007, we, we, were, we were both on the hot seat. We started 0-2, but we never got down. We never started making excuses or panicking. It wasn't easy, but we, we hung together. We stuck together as a close team. It was special. There was something special about the group. It's hard to describe that feeling. I mean, I said to John Mara, I said, John, you know, I'm not big on parades. <laughs> I don't know if, he said, you're not going to want to miss this one. And my God, thank God. And I'm, here we are coming down two million people hanging out of the buildings and throwing stuff, confetti down. I'm curious because when that happened, it was the story. It was an unbelievable upset. Everyone knew what a huge moment that was. 15 years down the line, do you feel any differently about it? Do you have any new thoughts about it? Not at all. As a matter of fact, I was really invigorated by thinking about the game again. You match up the, the greatest quarterback in the history of the game with probably the greatest big game quarterback in the history of the game. I'm looking out at the field on that third and seven, and three guys have got Eli in their grasp. And, and he wiggles his way out somehow. And we got David Tyree going to the post. Next thing I know, he's launching a ball down the middle of the field. I'm going, oh, no, oh, no. don't <laughs> overthrow. Don't overthrow that ball in the middle of the field. This kid goes up in the air. He catches the ball in two hands. He's got a safety, Rodney Harrison, who's 20 pounds at least heavier than him. He has the wherewithal to pin the ball to his helmet, to the side of his head. He hangs on to the ball on the ground. You make the point in your forward about the similarities between the two of you about the importance of attention to detail and the fundamentals. Another similarity that I've heard about both of you is that you're both secretly very funny. 
<laughs> we, not me. He is. No. Obviously, no, he, he is. is. He is. The dry sense in of the humor. right in the right situation. Sure. The coach has a in-season personality and an off-season <laughs> personality. And in-season, uh, you know, it's it's got to you know stay away from. You see him down the hall. People are ducking in the rooms and ducking in the bathrooms, and he's on a mission. And and you know, and then off-season, you you see the lighter side. You see. Uh, his passion for his charity. You see his passion for family and understanding the importance of getting players home to their families and being around your kids. But was there ever a moment where it slipped a little bit when you were being the tough coach, but then something was just too funny? I remember at, at, a, at a Saturday practice, so this is a walkthrough before, you know, before a game, and Chris Snee, who's you know, coach's son-in-law, all of a sudden he's kind of over there and, and you see him, yeah, he's like, hey, Chris, come over here. And he looks like he's kind of yelling at him. He's got the script and he's kind of hitting it like he's yelling at him. I was kind of close enough where I could hear him. He says, hey, are the grandkids coming over today? You know, they, what, time, what time are they coming? They don't come for lunch, you know, so, you know, he, he wanted to look like he was serious and yelling at him, but, but you know, you saw, you saw the lighter side and knew there was more to this man than just football, football, football. When you're in that year coaching, you've got Eli, You've got my now co-worker, Michael Strahan. Were you looking at the roster thinking, this team has an incredible future in broadcasting after football? <laughs> what I was really thinking is, these two have a really great sense of humor. They'll be really good after they get done, after they hang it up. Once you know? you're done with them, yeah. then they'll be good on TV. Yeah, they'll, they'll be able to really exert their personalities once they get away from me. Any tough love feedback to improve the Manning cast? <laughs> no, I couldn't even advise. Those yeah. guys are way, way beyond me. Just, just keep keep making fun of Peyton, basically. Right? Yeah. Basically. Yeah. In general. Basically. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Coach, before you wrote this book, you wrote an incredible op-ed in the New York Times about being a caretaker for your wife. Is there a message that you would just like to give people beyond football? The message was that the, the role of the caretaker is an all-consuming job. Everything you do, your schedule, your life is around the loved one that you're taking care of. The message really was is to for people to give themselves a break. I know for myself, if Judy was having a good day, I was having a good day. If she was having a bad day, I was a failure. What am I doing here? For 18 months, Judy couldn't walk, she couldn't talk, she couldn't do anything. I mean, it's something to, to behold in terms of what people go through, and they need support. You know, they need support of family, they need support of friends, and I'm in a position where I could hire. I hired caregivers, too, because it took two of us. You know, one couldn't do it. Well, there are people out there that can't afford that. And believe me, the burden, the physical and the mental burden is, is extremely difficult to deal with. And that's why I wrote the article, because I wanted people to pay attention to caregivers and realize what they were going through. And even a pat on the back, you know, drop off a dinner on Saturday night, you know, don't forget about that. Uh, before I let you both go, how do we feel about the Giants this season? Eli? You know, they're, they're, they're still in control of their own destiny right now. They're playing close games, and that's good. They're, they're in games, and now they're early in the year, they're finding ways to win them. Now, you know, in late in the year, it's going to be the same thing. Can they win tight games late in the year? Those are the teams that make the playoffs. All right, thank you very much for your time. Thank it's you. a pleasure to meet you. Thank hey, you. Thanks so much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you, Eli. Thank you, Coach. Thanks for coming that was in. awesome. Our thanks to Trevor for that. A giant win by Tom Coughlin with a forward by Eli Manning is available wherever books are sold. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.